Hello Crown Corner fans, it's your host Crown, ready to bring you another patch of fascinating, sometimes outrageous stories from everyday life. You never know what's around the corner, and these tales prove just that. From the unexpected to the unbelievable, we've got it all covered. So settle in, relax and let's embark on this storytelling journey together. Remember, if you enjoy these stories, hit that like button and subscribe for more. Now, let's get into it. This was a very early 90s before the internet or the Karen phenomenon. I live in a small town in a rural county. I worked for a local law enforcement agency during the day and a large retailer at night, stripping, scrubbing, waxing the floors. It was a ton of hours, but you gotta pay the bills. This afforded my wife the opportunity to work normal hours and be there to take care of the kids. Our sons were three and four at the time. One night, I was particularly tired. Things were pretty much caught up at work and I was wandering around in full zombie mode. My manager told me to go ahead and wrap up my work and clock out at midnight. I usually worked until 4 a.m. I get home about 20 minutes later to find a strange car in my driveway and a strange man in my bedroom was my wife. Given my profession and training, they were terrified that I would kill them or worse. I have always prided myself in being able to control even the most dangerous situations by talking people down and avoiding any use of force, no matter how tense things got. I just stood there and ordered him to get out of my house and take that which was him. I was beyond furious, but managed to hang on to the last strand of control that I had. As they ran out of the house, I shouted after her that she could come pick up her things from the yard in a couple of days. Fast forward three days, I'm a total wreck. I have not slept and barely eaten and have been walking around borderline in shock. My wife and my kids were my entire world, and it was all subtly torn down around me. I called my supervisor at the department and told him everything that happened and asked for a few mental health days. He agreed and gave me the time off. I didn't need to be around the public and that state of mind was a weapon. We have legal insurance at work. It works like medical insurance. You pick a lawyer from a list of providers and their specialty for discounted or even free services. The lawyer I chose was in the next county in a big city. Our meeting did not go well. She advised me that even with what had happened, the court would most likely rule that since she's a mother, she gets the kids and I would have to pay her child support, which is exactly what happened. It was a different time back then. I staggered out of her office feeling like I had been kicked in the gut. I was already in a very bad shape and this just pushed it to 11. My mouth was very dry and my throat felt like it would close. I desperately needed something to drink. This was a very posh part of town. Very old homes and very old money. Just down the road from the yacht club and such, there were no convenience stores around to be found. There was, however, a rather high-end grocery store nearby. I really did not want to be around people, but I was desperate for something to drink. I was dangerously dehydrated, so I went in. This is where our story begins. Cast of characters. CDV. Parola Deval, NL Nice Lady, SM Store Manager, PO Police Officer, me, Tired Rick of a Man Falling Apart at the Seams. I should start by saying that I was wearing tan khakis and a green polo shirt. The employees of the store wore either black or tan khakis and green polos with a store logo embroidered on the breast. A slightly different shade of green, but not enough to notice unless we were standing side by side. I was on a drink aisle staring at the bottles of Gatorade, Powerade, and so on, but I wasn't really noticing anything. I was staring straight through the shelves. My mind was a million miles away. I suddenly felt a sharp pain in my left upper arm as someone grabbed me hard and tried to snatch me around. And of instinct and training, I grabbed the wrist with my right hand, twisted it up and over, put my left hand on the upper arm and slammed them into the support column next to the shelf. I quickly looked around to check my surroundings and noticed five or six customers starting to staring at what was happening. I then looked at my attacker. It was a scrawny old woman. I released her and stepped back. Remember the original 101 Dalmatians movie? She looked very much like Krilla Devel from that film. Hair that was obviously colored, long fake nails, and way too many rings, and a necklace that looked like a string of small Christmas ornaments. 
Even though she looked to be in her late 60s, she must go to aerobics or something because she had some decent muscle tone under her saggy, overly tanned, leathery skin. As she was composing herself, I heard a nice lady behind me ask if I was okay. I turned to look at her and she pointed at my arm. I looked down and saw blood running down my arm and dripping on the floor. When I pulled her hand off of my arm, two of her fake nails must have cut my skin. It wasn't actually bad, but I just bleed very easily. At this point, I hear, Ree! I turn towards CDV just in time to hear, How dare you, peasant? Yes, she called me a peasant. Do you know who my husband is? Then she reached back to take a swing at me. As she tried to slap me, I simply stepped back, at the last second causing her to miss. She lost her balance and fell forward. She knocked several drink bottles off of the shelf and fell face first into a shelf causing her lip and nose to bleed. About this time, the manager ran to the corner and asked what was going on. Apparently, he saw her try to hit me and fall down. I want this troglodyte fired and arrested. Gotta love her vocabulary. The manager looks at me and tells her that I don't work there. Bullcrap. He ignored me and refused to assess me. Then attacked me and tried to kill me. About this time, I saw a local police officer rounding the corner. Apparently, one of the customers had the store call them as soon as this all started. The police officer must have been very nearby. Excellent response time. CDV putting on her best victim face. Oh, thank God you're here. I'm Mrs. CDV and I want this monster arrested. He tried to kill me. You the sad puppy dog eyes and crocodile tears. A nice lady says, excuse me, officer. That's not what happened at all. She grabbed the man. Stop lying to cover for him, you trollop. CDV's spectacular vocab again. Me, holding up my department ID for the police officer to see, I work at my local department. Me turning to the store manager and pointing up, do those cameras work? The nice lady adds, excuse me officer, see the blood on his arm? Pointing to the bleeding scratches on my arm, that's where she, stop lying for him, my husband is Mr. CDV, and you'll do what I say right now, or I will call him and he will destroy all of you. Ma'am, maybe it's best that we come to the store manager's office to discuss this. As we all turn to leave, he asked the store manager to take her to his office while he talked to me for a second. Police officer haven't apparently dealt with her before. Okay, so what actually happened? I told him and reminded him that it will all be on tape as I pointed back up to the camera mount. The nice lady adds, Officer, I can tell you that she was screaming at him for a while and then attacked him for no reason. I was on the aisle and saw the whole thing. Then she looked at me. Didn't you hear her screaming at you? I'm sorry, I was lost in thought. I didn't notice her until she grabbed me. I also had pretty bad tinnitus from my time in the military, so that could have also contributed to me missing CDV's gentle requests for my assistance. Officer says, Thank you, ma'am. I'll need your contact information for the report and possibly testimony. Turning to me, I'll need your information as well. I gave him one of my department business cards. He advised me to let my department know right away. He also told me that her husband actually is someone very important in the city. He was a retired city commissioner and former CEO of a big insurance agency and that many big city leaders all the way up to the mayor's office were basically in his pocket. I went directly to my supervisor's office and told him the whole story. He had me fill out an incident report and all the supplemental forms and he said it sounded like a clear case of self-defense especially if it was all on camera. She ended up being charged with aggravated battery since there were injuries. Hello everyone, life hasn't been easy lately and to my surprise, Karen helped me with my job interview. For the past few months I've been hunting for a job with no luck, but a few days ago, I had a chance to turn it all around. A serious job interview with a company I've been eyeing for a long time. Dressed in my only suit, I set off early giving myself more than enough time to get there. As I drove through the busy streets, my mind was a mix of rehearsed answers and hopeful scenarios. And that's when I first noticed her. A shiny red car weaving in and out of lanes as if the traffic rules were merely suggestions. A driver, a woman with a severe Karen appearance, the haircut, check, the aggressive expression, check, the extensive makeup for 7 a.m. in the morning, check. She seemed to be arguing with someone over her phone. I remember thinking, stay away from her. But fate had other plans. Just a block away from my destination, it happened. 
The red car swerved sharply, cutting me off and forcing me to slam on the brakes. My heart raced as I narrowly avoided a collision. Annoyed, I honked, hoping to alert her to the near mess. She stopped her car abruptly, got out and marched towards me. Her face was a picture of outrage. You almost hit my car. Are you blind? She accused me. I was stunned. You cut me off. I was trying to avoid hitting you. That's no excuse for reckless driving. She retorted, ignoring my explanation. Realizing the time, I tried to de-escalate. Look, I have an important interview. Can we just forget this happened? But she was far from done. In a fit of rage, she repeatedly kicked my car with her leg. And when that became too boring, she picked her handbag and started hammering on my window with it, leaving a noticeable scratch. My jaw dropped in disbelief. In my frustration, I kept screaming at her behind closed windows. You can't just damage someone else's property. She seemed to get bored after a minute or two and was going back to her car. I stepped out of my car and screamed some obscenities at her. I was throwing words around to be honest and mentioned something about how her behavior contributes to the divorce rate in the US. That must have hit a nerve. Her response was to storm back to her car, but in her hurry, her purse strap got caught in the door of my car. As I got back into my car, eager to leave the madness behind that salvage what was left of my interview opportunity, I didn't notice her purse got in my door. I started driving, and that's when the chaos escalated. Her screams brought me to an immediate halt. She was being dragged along by her purse strap, creating a scene straight out of a sitcom if it wasn't so terrifying. People on the street started gathering, some filming the bizarre scene, and Karen was on the ground yelling and cursing. Her fury undiminished even in her compromised position. It wasn't long before the sound of police sirens filled the air. Two officers approached the scene trying to piece together the absurd spectacle before them. Karen, despite being in the wrong, played the victim role perfectly. He attacked me and tried to drive off with my purse, she claimed, her voice a mix of anger and distress. That's not what happened. I argued, desperate for the officers to understand. She damaged my car and accidentally got her purse caught in the door. Luckily, a shop owner from across the street came forward. I've got everything on my security camera, he said, motioning towards his door. The officers reviewed the footage, which clearly showed Karen's erratic driving, her assault on my drive, and the accidental dragging. The truth was undeniable. As the police dealt with Karen, who was now facing charges for her actions, I realized my interview time had passed. I called the company, explained the situation, and hoped for understanding. Surprisingly, they were sympathetic. We saw the incident on social media. It's quite the talk of the town. We can reschedule your interview, the HR representative said. A hint of amusement in her voice. I couldn't believe it. A day that started with the prospect of an important job interview had turned into a public spectacle only to circle back to a rescheduled opportunity. As for carrying the footage from the shop's security camera, led to her arrest, her reckless actions, and entitled attitude had finally caught up with her. Hey Crown Corner friends, enjoying the show? Click that like button to show some love and drop a comment to share your thoughts. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe to join our amazing community for more awesome stories. Alright, let's dive back into our next tale. So, I have a nearly 4-year-old daughter. Frida and our next door neighbors have a son, Fred, the same age. Their first days are a week apart. The kids are best friends and love playing together, though we try to limit it a bit because they have a dynamic that gets them really rowdy and riled up. Fred is a handful and I think his mom does her best, but Fred's dad, so whiny and entitled, it's infuriating. So the other day, all the neighbors with kids got together to do a little winter bonfire in the backyard. You know, roast marshmallows and make bread on a stick in a fire. So I got sent out to get a hold of some good sticks we could use. And I took Frida and Fred with me. We live in townhouses where there is a long row of garden plots you can rent. One of the spaces is unused and full of the branches and things people cut out of their gardens. So we head over there to grab some sticks. The kids bring a couple of toy shovels they are playing with. As I'm trying to cut branches, the kids go into the next garden plot. I know the older lady who has it, and she is always welcoming to the kids playing on her plot and is always offering them strawberries or peas from the garden, so I figured it was okay for them to play in there for a couple of minutes. Well, I hear stones hitting the ground and 
manic laughter, so I look over and see Fred is kicking over all the bricks this lady has made a raised planter out of. Then my squealing Frida is grabbing the bricks and throwing them. I put a stop to that real fast and told him we have to rebuild the planter and that it's not okay to ruin other people's things. Fred got bored with that and found a place where he could dig a hole. I told him I needed help, but I couldn't make him. Frida helped me fix the planter I went to play with Fred when we finished. I went back into the batch of branches, cut what I needed, and came back out after three minutes. I'd heard they were digging in some dirt and that was fine, but as I'm coming out, I hear that impish, oh, we know we're being naughty, giggling again. I found they had dug all the gravel out of another neighbor's garden and were flinging it all over the parking lot. This time I was pissed. Had I not just told them not to ruin other people's gardens? Now we need to clean up this mess. Not okay, guys. I told Frida to run home and get the big broom and told Fred to start shoveling gravel back in place. Frida took off to fetch it. Fred sat down and resolutely informed me that I am not his dad and he doesn't have to listen to me. I told him that when he's with me, he most certainly does. Just like Frida has to listen to his parents when she's with them. Fred cries. So I call his dad and say I need reinforcement as we have a situation over here. Frida comes with a broom and I get her started shoveling. I'm sweeping and can see it's hard for her to understand why she has to help while Fred gets to sit and play with his shovel. I explain it's because Fred doesn't want to help clean up the mess they had made, but that Fred's daddy was coming to make him do the right thing too. Fred's dad shows up and I explain what's happened and that we need to get this cleaned up and fix up this planter they destroyed. But instead he goes to Fred all like, oh buddy, are you tired? You're acting like this because you've had a long day, eh Bal? Do you want to go home and have a juice and watch some Paw Patrol? I'm like, after we get this mess cleaned up, right? I told the kids we need to fix this before we go back. And he responds with, nah, it's just kids being kids. Let them garden owners fix it. They won't know who did it anyway. Besides, I'm freezing out here. Aren't you cold, Fred? Let's go. Frida says she's cold too and wants to go with Fred. I told her that I was also cold, but we can't just leave someone's garden in ruins or leave gravel all over. So we swept and shoveled everything back in place for 20 minutes. Frida asked about why Fred didn't have to help and got to watch TV about 15 times. I could see the cogs in her little head turning trying to reason out why she was being punished while Fred got rewarded. And I just didn't know what to say to her other than in our family we take responsibility and clean up our own messes. I had to bite my tongue and not add that Fred's dad is an entitled crap and that the apple doesn't fall far from the entitlement tree. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Crown Corner. I hope these stories have entertained you, maybe even made you think a bit. Life's a wild ride full of unexpected twists, and we're here to share those moments with you. Thank you for joining me today, and if you liked what you heard, please show your support with a like and a comment. Your feedback means the world to me. Don't forget to subscribe for more amazing stories, and remember to keep it light, fun, and easygoing. Until next time, this is Crown. Signing off.